Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Welcome, 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 welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today we're going to be talking about communication, how we communicate, why we communicate, actually what communication is all about. So, and how we can make it better, right? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Aliza. I'm your expert hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. And the name of my business is Heal Within. That's exactly why we're here doing Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. So thank you for being present and uh, being here. All right, let's talk about why do we communicate? Actually, what is communication? Communication is a dialogue, a way that we um, have find a language to communicate, to express what we are thinking, what we are feeling to another person in order to say, this is where I am and I want to communicate what I feel, what I think and then they communicate back. So this beautiful bridge, I like to call it a bridge. And in order for do that, I'm asking you, why do you communicate? Why do we communicate? So the primary reasons for communication is three. Of course, everything about me is in threes, right? So number one, the main thing, the most important thing about communication is we want to feel good. So I want to feel better. I want to communicate how I'm thinking so that I can feel better about what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and express my thoughts and feelings to you to convey uh, the message, right? So when we communicate in a way is to express opinions, to make an impact, to make some changes to happen. And everything we do to communicate is the result is for the better, right? So the better it is, the better it becomes, the happier you become, the happier I am. So that's the number one reason. Number two reason we communicate sometimes when we are angry, when we are upset, when there is a what we call it is there is a miscommunication. What I thought is, uh, or what was on my mind, maybe you read it wrong, especially when people text. Oh my God, texting is one of the hardest or even email. It does not convey tonality. It does not convey, as you see, body language. So it is, even the voice is not there. The only thing that is conveyed is words. And hopefully, if we are a good communicator, we have better words that we choose. So words are truly powerful. As a clinical hypnotherapist, one of the things that we do is, that I do also, is help my clients understand the impact of words. So when we say certain words like don't, the subconscious mind does not truly, does not compute the word don't and hears do. It's amazing how it happens. Don't do this. It only hears do this. So be more cognizant, be more aware when you speak. And when you want to say something or communicate something and share something that you want someone to take an action or to understand or how you are expressing, always find the way you would like them to do something because it's always about what? Moving towards the result. And if the result is something that you want them to do, then speak in sharing. This is what I want the results to be. This is what I want to express. This is uh, this is how 
I want to share and I would like you to stop doing this. I would like you to make a difference. I would like you to finish this project and the project needs to be finished by the end of this month, by the end of this day. And those are my expectations because bottom line in life, communication is an expectation with our own perception. That's what it is. So if I have a perception or I perceive something to be the way I want it to be and my expectations are this, how I communicate and how you communicate with someone and if your expectations are not met, then maybe the communication, the verbiage the tonality and how you expressed it, they did not see how it makes sense for them and how they feel good about the expectations. And they did not know how to communicate back so that they feel good and they have a better result. You see, when we are upset, when there's two people who get into this argument. That means I'm expressing, venting, releasing my anger because an expectation was not met. Secondly, the argument, I'm raising my voice to be heard. You know, sometimes when we get into arguments, the voice gets escalated, escalated and escalated. So the other person, they either cringe, they will either crumble or they have to raise their voice higher or they feel like they are being downplayed or told or hovered and put down. So their response, automatic response, defensive mechanism comes higher and they have to raise their voice thinking now I can be heard by raising my voice to shut or hover about on your voice. That's when people get into this yelling uh, argument or the screaming banters. When there is a banter, that means now a whole vessel of ping pong has started. And when people start getting better at the ping pong means I'm going to start um, bouncing back and back and volley without even stopping to hold the ball to see where the positioning is so that I can restart. You see the b yelling part of it, the communication underneath anger is what hurt. I'm hurt because you're yelling at me. I'm hurt because you're not communicating properly. You're giving me the finger of blame. And when there is a blame automatic, the subconscious mind goes into defensive mechanism, either in language or in communicating in a more aggressive way. It is exactly at that very moment that one needs to become better and stop for a moment. And when I say stop, it can be just a temporarily pause and think to yourself, is this helping me feel better? Is this helping my, the person I'm communicating feel better? And if the intention is to hurt them, then is hurting them making me feel good? See, bottom line, communication is there's got to be a better feeling. The third thing that we do when we are communicating is truly the first thing, which is creating a result. What is the result that I want in a communication? And it can be love. It can be lovers. It can be with family members. It can be when we are in a therapy session, when a client comes and they want a, a change of a habit or a behavior, 
my question first and foremost is number one what is it that you want what is the result you would like to see if you are in a anxiety uh, how bad is your anxiety how bad is when you go into this panic what happens to your body what happens to your tonality when you feel anxious or you feel that anxiety coming upon you how do you respond so if your anxiety level is at a six or seven right or at an eight or nine i've had a client walking in here actually sisters brought him in here and he his anxiety was according to him i'm at a 10 which is not possible because at a 10 they would be having a panic anxiety almost close to a heart attack so when he was here i would say i sat him down and i said what if i say your panic and anxiety if it was at a 10 you would not be able to sit here and communicate with me so in order for you to feel better let's take a moment and calm yourself just for a moment to pause and say this is a good the good is at a number two when i have full control and the bad you're at a hospitalization at a 10 that means it's so bad you can't even sit here so you must be in an eight if you're an eight if you could pause for just a moment take a moment and say okay i want to feel good and how good do i want to feel so by the end of the session i would like to feel at least a six now we have a measure and by communicating this and showing them it is possible that you can feel a six and six is so much better than where you are right now now the communication is number one i'm going to help you feel better number two we can help you right manage where you are right now so finding this bridge by the tools and the techniques i help you with breath work with relaxation with taking control and realizing that you are in full cognizant uh, way of being and taking control of your mind of your body your tonality and instead of hyperventilating just for a moment beginning to pause pause and relax now that you feel better let's see what was the causation so once you have the cause the result becomes so much better again communication no matter what we are communicating to make a change physically mentally and emotionally to find a communication that i want to say i care for you how about i love you or communicate this is not the result i expected i would like have a better communication let's see what kind of a better result that it becomes a win-win situation for us we can find instead of yelling pointing fingers recognizing that you can pause for just a moment and if anger comes from hurt and if i am hurt that means i'm crying for help that means the result that i asked for or i was imagining it or i was expecting it my expectations of what i wanted is not met so let's come to the playing field let's start you know in the old old traditional ways uh, the apaches the indians uh, they used the tribal way of communication was they used the chief would put a stick and place it so if this the uh, the tip was facing you as he would spin it then you had the right to speak and while you're speaking i hold my space 
and I hold my breath, I hold my word, and I am not going to cut you off while you are expressing what you are thinking and feeling or wanting to share. And when they were done, then the chief would take it and say, okay, now you hold. The tip, the head is pointing to the other person. Now you have all the opportunities to express what your side is, what you think, how you feel. And then remember, there's three sides to everything. Your side, your side, and the truth. And that's where the chief was like an arbitrator, like a guide, like a therapist, like a referee or a coach. And say, okay, you said, you said. Now, let's see how we can find the middle ground where I call it the bridge. We all have the ability to do this. We do. And every single day we communicate in words, we communicate when we take a text, we dance. Dancing is a communication. It's a form of communication of how you feel. May you be in flow. When you communicate the way you walk, your body language communicates. Oh my God, yesterday I was at a seminar, a great seminar at luncheon and sitting what very dear friend of mine next to, uh, next to one another and just our body language of how happy we are to be together every time we are together it's like you know I'm so happy to be with you I'm so happy to be next to you and it's genuine and be genuine in expressing what you feel what you want to convey be genuine in communicating what you are thinking. And when you are genuine, even if you are hurt and if your expectations have not been met, is finding the way instead of zap hurting, be mindful. I have this private group on Facebook. It's called The Daily Gratitude. By all means, let me know if you would like to join. Every single day, it's something about Mondays being mindful. Tuesdays, it's Heal Talk Tuesday. Something that it helps you heal. When you want to do something, being mindful, taking a moment to pause, and right before you communicate, choose better words that it's not hurting, but expressing, communicating, and communicating of what it is that you want instead of what it is that you don't want. Again, the subconscious mind does not understand, I don't want. So those, those are the tips. Take a moment, pause, be mindful of your words. If you are angry, hurt, or in a spiteful moment, take a walk and then come back to the table and express the things that you were expecting, your expectations were this and your expectations were not met. Let's find a way to bridge it, to communicate, or maybe we have to go with to someone who they can analyze it or they can see what we cannot see. We're not communicating better. And the last one is you can always find a way to feel better because that's what communication is. What can I do to make you feel better? That we have a better result to express what I think, what I feel, and both our needs are met. So hopefully today's communication, today's session communicated that you too can turn around and communicate better. And always remember, words are so powerful. 
when we hurt, hmm, we also want to feel good and be loved and appreciated. So bottom line is, how do you communicate with yourself? And that's another thing for you to be mindful of. When you communicate to yourself that inner dialogue behind your mind, when you sit and think to yourself, are you saying the words, the gestures? Do you get up and dance to relieve, to vent, to release whatever, if it is anger, if it is frustration, so that you can feel better? Again, the number one rule, we communicate to feel better. First, with yourself, with your inner self, with your body, and then how we project outside. My name is Lisa Bubari. I am your expert hypnotherapist. And to make a change, that's what I do. I help you make the changes, either emotionally or mentally, sometimes, more often, physically, where you have not found the ways to do. Contact me, send me a message, and you can always go to healwithin.com. You can even subscribe right here. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, God bless and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. And if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here.